ended up like trying to take a shortcut back home and like ended up tripping on the third wire and got electrocuted and passed away. What? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. So what? So he, when you say he took a shortcut, he went on the, on the track? Yeah, yeah. So from like where we live to the nightclub he went to, you can either take a long journey back home yeah. or if you jump on the tracks, you can cut out like an hour's worth of walking. So the police said that yeah, he was intoxicated and tried to take a shortcut back home on his own and then tripped over the third rail and ended up being found oh. like early hours in the morning. Obviously passed away. The Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Street Culture. Killer Keller Podcast. The elevator's going. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Here we are again. It's that time. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers. Central London, as central as you need to be, in fact. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, hiya. What's good? Hey, listen, we're talking 2023 graffiti. And if you've been roaming about on the streets, on the track sides, on the trains, wherever you may frequent your graffiti, uh, there'll be a man that uh, is very much part of the, uh, the tapestry. L-W-S-O-S-A-P-A, Inside the House. You'll know him as Moan. How are we, sir? What's happening, brother? Good, man. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Not too bad, not bad. Yeah, talking about the, the, the day in a life, I think. Oh, yeah, I love it, love it. Can't be getting out doing your thing on the streets, mate, whether it's legal or illegal. Always <laughs> got to get out of there, mate. That's right, that's right. And with respect, uh, do it uh, in your own time very carefully. And, uh, yeah, don't get yourselves into trouble because that's really what it's all about, this this episode. It is, it's a different kind of landscape out there to, to back in the day. And I know you, you come from good stock. Where'd you come from? Tell, tell uh, us your story. So I'm from southwest London, uh, Kingston upon Thames. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, mate. Fucking grew up in the day, early nineties. Used to see OSA, learn fraud around the manor. Big was, up them, man. Come that's on. That's it. They were my inspiration. Chuck, BRS, Sky mm. High, Sterling, THC. That's it, mate. That's it. So they were like my main inspirations back in the day, growing up mm. as a young kid. And yeah, mate. Always try and emulate. Uh, that southwest London style, them nice, sharp, clean, crispy letters. Mm-hmm. And yeah, mate, that's that's where I got the flow from. That's where I try and keep it that sort of style. Mm, I'll tell you what, man, when I think about that era, Jesus, THC were really doing it. I mean, this was around it. This was a little shy before RT and ATG. These guys were really picking up speed for their Yeah, time. yeah, definitely. Like, tar- I remember seeing vibes. Um, there's Sky High, all that down Pig's Alley, which was a local sort of legal spot around our ways, mm. and seeing them burn the walls doing full colour productions, and I was so inspired by that. Mm. Just uh, made me want to get heavy in the game, you know, keep at it, try and progress at my styles, letters, outlines, fills, all that sort of stuff. Heavy hitters, yeah, man. Yeah, mate, definitely, definitely. Proper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even now, Sky High, big up Sky High. He's just kept. He's just kept it moving, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. That that's one person that's just never stopped. Like even to this day, he's still mm. out there progressing, doing all these mad different letter fills and that mm. man of rated stuff. Highly, that's yeah. the banging stuff. Vibes as well. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, definitely. About hundred. <sighs> so good stock, southwest. That's it, mate. What's that area? That, so um, we had the conversation with DHS. You have to forgive me, boys. Um, big up the panel beaters. Um, the Area, in, is it Wimbledon? Yeah, yeah, Wimbledon, Rains yeah. Park, that yeah. sort of area. Yeah. Some big writers around there. Yeah. Fucking lots of people. Oh, my area, I like. Ali, mm. Wimbledon, Wall and Fame. I remember me and my boys used to just walk down there, see all the new outlines, new dubs, new pieces and that. Just get blown away by all the full colour pieces and that, man. It was sick. <laughs> Fucking sick back in the day. As you come into, was it, it, I think it was Wimbledon Station, there was the building on the right hand side coming if you were coming out of london from london into the station yeah there'd be that kind of red brick work wall as you get is that right is that wimbledon? yeah is that sorry before wimbledon yeah 
before. So you had before. coming from like Rains Park into Wimbledon. Yeah. On the right, there was this big wall just before the Wimbledon station. Yeah. And we knew that as Wimbledon Wall of Fame. It was a Wall of Fame. Yeah, we used to go there, see Learn, Fraud, fucking too many names to mention, but that like, top to bottom, that whole wall was just absolutely burned. It was just beautiful. Oh, mate, it was Rare. fucking banging, banging. Like, even now, I spoke to Ford recently, I was saying, mate, me and you used to go and smash that, we'll do a big full colour, just take the whole wall out. So we might have a little something coming up soon, we'll wait and see, see what happens. South West, man, really did used to, rep- well, still do, big up my family there, but uh, yeah, they, the, the representation on that, I mean, I don't know, just a, lo- a level of lawlessness, but with still that integrity of quality. That's it, that's it. I mean, all of London, every West London, East, South, North, Everyone's got their legends in the game, mm. but for me, growing up in Southwest, the people I see from a young age, that's that's the game that I soaked up from an early age. That's the style that I've tried to emulate and mm. sort of latch on to. Not latch on to, but inspired by to be creative in my own sort of way from you know the past people before me, mm. sort of thing. You know, I think when I when I think of Mona, I, I think of a, a very, very, it almost like a funky worm style. Of <laughs> okay, okay. Would, would I be right? It's quite. It's very distinctive. I mean, I know the PA boys like have a distinct. Each person has a distinctive look. Yeah, there's not one of the same. Do you That's know what it, I mean? Yeah. I, I really, <clears throat> and also the the richness in which that the application of the paint. It's like thorough. It's like fucking well thought through colors and That's design. It, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we've all me me personally and everyone else. We all I think if I writer in general, like you mm. want to try and create your own letter format, your own feels, your own styles that is going to sort of separate you from another writer. You want to try and be individual, be yourself, but, uh, yeah, try and be different from the next person. That's like, that's what graph is, you know, being unique, having your own flow, your own style. Mm. And what more can you do once you've got that on Smash? You're golden, really. Mm. Yours seems very meticulously done, though. No, I know you move quick, but it's almost like a stamp. It's almost like the way that you've, Proportion the the letters with the colours. It's almost like a stamp. Yeah, well, that didn't happen overnight, you know. From an early age, I've been doing my hand styles, practicing my outline. Because for me, like your blueprint to your dub is your letters. Once mm. you've got your letters on point, and you can do them clean, crispy, quick time. The next things you fill. Once you've got your fills on point, <coughs> you're golden, really, man. You're good to go. So how long have you been sketching for? How long? When did uh, it all? Let's let's get into that. How, when did it all begin? So for me. It was probably like the first time I learned about graph. I was about nine, ten years old. So that was when, like, the area I'm from, there's this alleyway called the Cut. Now, the Cut has got a few train lines down one side. Uh, it's in this alleyway, and then people's back gardens on the other side. And there was this, like, I don't know if it was a legal wall or if it wasn't, but either way, it was absolutely battered in graph. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mum used to walk me to primary school down this alleyway. I remember saying, Mum, like, what's this stuff? What's this stuff? She was like, oh, it's graffiti, it's illegal. <laughs> Trying to like, talk me out of it, it's a bad thing, don't want to do that. And straight <laughs> I was like, no, nah, that's a bit of me. I'm fucking all over that. Yeah. That's something that I just fucking love, being destructive and creative at the same time. Right. That's a bit, that's a <laughs> Sign bit of me. Sign me up, man. That's, that's a bit of me right there. So I remember after I knew what it was, straight to primary school, boys, we need to start graphing. You make your own tag and you just write everywhere. Hold on, stop. <laughs> boys, we need to start going. What, so you, you just rally troops and you just, just like... Just got my boys together. We, yeah, we were already a bit of wrongans, you know, getting in trouble at school, yeah. just little young ragamuffins just doing our thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we fucking started robbing teachers' whiteboard markers, graphing around the school, down little dark alleyways or whatever, being little shits like you are when you're a kid. Mm-mm-mm. And, uh, yeah, that's where it started. It's funny, as a, as a kid growing up... In London or the surrounding London areas, there was a there's a cloak that you can be disguised as a graffiti. Right? It's like, and this is to my understanding, obviously, um, you you get away a lot more because the city is your is your curtain. That's if you're out, out, of, out of town as or not from the city, from a rural area, it, make, it makes it quite hard. Yeah, yeah. So we're like where I was from is, is sort of on the border of southwest London and Surrey. Mm. So we're like. You know, it's, it's busy, but it's not, like, on point where everything is on your doorstep. So you've got, like, it's a bit more chilled, a bit more quiet. You can sort of do things without having police and cameras on your every move, mm. but you're still, like, a step away from that central mm. life where everything's manic and, like, on, on job sort of thing around there. So, yeah, man, it was good. Good times. Good growing up in the 90s 
and sort of soaking it all up, man. Love mm -hmm. it. Wouldn't 90s. change it for the world. 90s do herald a time of, of mad characters in the scene. Yeah, well. yeah. I remember since, since like, I was in year seven, year eight, like me and my boys, we, we kept it local. We didn't just get trade into London. So a lot of the London graph I saw was on websites like Writer's Delight, Graph DK. Mm. So we'd all sit on that, like, bro, have you seen this new zombie piece? It's character. And all these people were, like, soaking up their style from the internet, not even without physically seeing it in person. And that's how we got so much inspiration from seeing it there. And then we want to be like, bro, that's sick. Try and, like, uh, get inspired by their letters and try and bring some of that to our own flavour type thing. Mm. Yeah. How much of that... Because obviously you don't you don't take in the the physical of being in front of the, the, the pieces. Like, do you think some of the fact that you didn't... Because, you know, you can go real close to a piece and you can kind of get an idea of how certain things are done. Right. But with that, with that a, a handicap, did that give you like, the opportunity to look at different things in a different way? Well, it's good because you're not just seeing a certain area of graph. You're seeing all of London, all of everyone's different areas of graph mm. in one page. Mm. So you can see some of the best writers from every area. So mm. you're getting inspiration from everyone, not just a certain like local line that you might be riding, mm. which is always good, which is always good to so see. The internet really broke down that. It did, it broke barriers. You were the first generation of internet, right? You, you, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I was primary school and that's when like, um, computers started getting brought to school. It was mm. like a, a new thing back then. Mm. So we're there with this big, massive monitor, mm. all this stuff, like, wow, this is mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the first thing we're trying to do is find new graph and that. <laughs> See yeah. what we can find on the web. <laughs> yeah, mate. So, but yeah, so that's how I first got introduced to graph. But at the same time, my older brother, who was about seven or eight years older than me, uh, he like put me on game. He was going to jungle raves. His whole room was covered in graph, uh, showing me the ways like Nicholson t-shirts, Air Max 90s, climber fit hats, all that sort of stuff. So he showed me the ways like, this is fucking what it is. Like, this is style. And yeah, so from seeing him graph, that was like, it sort of inspired me. I latched on to what he was doing. I thought, shit, he's doing that. He was like, inspired me to get into it a bit. It always takes an older brother, doesn't it? That's it's it, that's it. Yeah, so he was doing it and I was absolutely loving it, just soaking it all up. So he was into like the same sort of graph. He came up through the, that, that era that's it. of... He, he, he was born in sort of mid-80s, so he was, like I say, about eight years older than me and he knew quite a few writers from around my that's area. A big jump, that's a big jump eight years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like my older... I had an older sister and brother, nearly ten years older than me, so I was like the baby of the family. Got my sister, who's like the... Uh, someone who's like book smart. My brother was a sports person and I was a bit like the black sheep of the family, like the creative who just wanted to, just got in trouble all the time, wanted to be out there. Fucking... Three's the magic number. That's that sounds it. like a concoction That's of... That's it, man. Household hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so, so drum and bass then? So you, you would, did you inherently get into drum and bass? And yeah, yeah. Because Graf was a big part of that culture. Yeah, definitely. So he was like, he had Still the um, jungle, his massive CD. Mm. He got that. And then he passed it down to me. So I was like banging out drum and bass jungle, telling all my friends about it when I'm like nine, 10 years old. They'd like never heard of it. So for me, it's like the cool kid because I know about all this stuff, but they don't even know about it. Mm. So I'm showing them my mates the ways, showing them the vibes of all the fucking like the fashion, the graph, just that whole thing. Like I learned from him and then I'll tell my friends about it and it became, yeah, a big part of, you know, who I was then and who I am today. It's mad how, uh, how that translates to it. That it, it, it's almost like each generation is scorned by this. It starts with one person and it filters down. I bet your I bet your uh, your tape decks were recording nothing but this. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got hundreds of tape decks passed down to me, all mm. drummer bass, jungle, all that mm. sort of stuff. Walkman, like before my time, and I've got it now. Like fuck, this is mad. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Who were your influences at that time? Because obviously we've talked about the sky eyes and the, but 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 you you know you're quite young and and you were getting influence from your brother. So yeah, who, yeah. So. Like from my era, there was OSA, so it was Learn, yeah. Fraud, Orgy, Vans. Like these mm. people were yeah. there around my neck of the woods that I'd see quite a lot. So, what was who was your brother into? What was that? What, uh, writers wise. So yeah, he uh, was into like OSA, Renza, mm. like all them boys there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, when I was like in year six towards but the end of primary school, a bit of a madness happened where my brother, like he just finished uh, at college. So he went out of his mates to go and celebrate, passing his A-levels. 
went to a nightclub and uh, ended up like trying to take a shortcut back home and like ended up tripping on the third wire and got electrocuted and passed away. What? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. So what? So he, when you say he took a shortcut, he went on the, on the track? Yeah, yeah. So from like where we live to the nightclub he went to, you can either take a long journey back home yeah. or if you jump on the tracks, you can cut out like an hour's worth of walking. So the police said that yeah, he was intoxicated and tried to take a shortcut back home on his own and then tripped over the third rail and ended up being found oh. like early hours in the morning. Obviously passed away. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, that was a mad one. And it was because of that, sort of, like, even to this day, like, my mates would be like, come, we'll go smash a panel, we'll go do some track size, this and that. And I think, you know, my family and parents have been through so much because of that happening. It always sort of plays in my mind thinking, yeah, like, I love doing it, I love getting out, painting, doing this and that. But if something happens to me, I'm going to put them through the same situation that they've been through for the last 20 years. Mm. So it's always like that moral compass thing, do I do it because I love doing it? But there's always that knock-on effect is if it goes wrong, they can't take that, man. I don't want to put my fat parents through that same thing they've already been through yeah, for yeah, so yeah. many years, yeah. Can we stay on this subject for a second? Yeah, yeah. OK. So, were your brothers concerned? Rest in peace. Fuck. Yeah, man, rest in peace. Rest in for peace. real, rest in peace. Um, it doesn't go on miss on this podcast how important flowers must be given when it, when it comes to soldiers like that who pass away by being on the tracks. And at this point, don't try that stuff at home. That's it, it's, it's a nice little story. Um, a serious one. Was he... So was he an active graffiti writer? So, you know what? Because I was only 10, 11 when he was 18. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, he knew writers. So I don't know if he was out doing it. Because if you're that age, you're probably not going to tell your younger brother, mm. I'm out walking the tracks because then you're going to think they're going to want to do it. Mm. So was he, did he do it and being smart by trying not to tell me? Mm. Like something I don't really ever know, probably whether will know, it's probably for the best, you know? Like I could contemplate the situation, but I think, you know, I've grieved over that my whole life. I dealt with it from 13. I used to smoke a shitload of weed every day to try and like escape that sort of trauma. Mm. So years of smoking and smoking, and it got to the point where my mum's mental health started to deteriorate so much through the years so that my dad then had to take a lot of time off work uh, to look after her. It got to the point where he took so much time off work, they then made him redundant. So now my parents can't afford to pay their bills and ended up being homeless. And now I'm still like smoking so much weed just to try and like take my mind away. What was your sister at this point? She's, she's dealing with it her own way. Like my mum's taking antidepressants, my dad's drinking, I'm smoking weed. So everyone's trying to deal with this trauma in their own separate way. Yeah, mate, madness, madness. Bro. So, yeah, I'm smoking a shitload of weed and, like, trying to just take my mind off the situation because it's, like, got, took me to a point where like, I couldn't take it anymore, man. Like, life got real deep. Like, I'm just trying to chill my mates, have a good time. Yeah. After my smoke weed, I can just sit there and just think about what they're going through. So it took me to actually stop smoking weed to sort of get a moment of clarity and realise that there's nothing more I can do for myself and for them, just to be with them, to support them, to help them get through this dark time. And now that, you know, I've stopped doing that, I'm starting to be more helpful, help them, and things are looking up, man. Things mm. are looking good, they're doing better, they've got a new house, my dad's got a new job. So from that negative, dark situation that's happened, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. There's always positives to be taken from a negative situation if you just get your mind right and just, you know, be there for your friends, be there for your family. Mm. Just try and be, you know, positive, positive, optimistic, and, you know, things will be good. Mm. Things will be good, man. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, do... Does that... Uh, treading carefully, of course. Does that impact you and your current activities in, pa in painting, knowing that um, the implications are <clears throat> very close to home and that home could be impacted by anything that you do accidentally or unprovoked, like you might just get yourself into a spot. Does that play in your mind? 
It does. It does. Like it was only a couple of years after he passed away that I was out with my mates when I was thirteen, walking down the tracks. We we're out painting, and I'm I'm there, and I'm thinking, fuck. Like I'm now on the same position, less than a mile away from where what happened to my brother. What? Yeah, I'm there now, and I'm I'm my mind. I'm thinking, this is fucked, man. I really shouldn't be here. I know what I'm going through, what my family's going through, and I'm here doing this now. I've got to be some fucking okay, kind of let's, let's, yeah, let's just speak about this. So you 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 end up in the same within the same distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because where where it happened? Oh, mate, to that would have just fucked my heart. It did, man. It did. But you know what? I'm with my boys. We're all out. We're graphing. We're doing our thing. And you're not thinking too. Uh, I'm not taking uh, things too heavy, man. I'm just going with the flow. Like I, I've already loved graph. I want to get myself out there. As I know, as long as my mind's in the right place and I'm being careful, mm. we're good. We're good. Mm. Worst case scenario, I'll get nicked. As long as I'm safe, watch where I'm walking, mm. play it cool, we're all good. But there's been, you know, a lot of the graph I do on tracks, it will be on my own. As I know, if I'm on my own, I've got no one else to worry about. Like, I'm like an assassin, I go in there, I'm sneaking, I'm on point, I make sure my head's focused on what I'm doing. But no matter how careful you are, these, these, all it takes is a second of accident, not mm. paying attention, for mm. things to go, you know, from good to really fucked real quick. Mm. Oh, there's been times where... Yeah, tell us some times. Tell us some scenarios uh, where that has played a little yeah, bit too close. Yeah, so, I mean, one time... Which had... was all past tense, by the way. This yeah, isn't, like, recent Don't anything. do that no more, Jesus man. Jesus Christ. So there was Carry one on. moment I had a bit of an epiphany, like a bit of a... Uh, a bit of an... Not an awakening, but uh, one time where it really just clicked in my mind that this is... You know, it's a risky game, man. You've got, I've got a lot to lose. Anyone out there doing that, they've got a lot to lose, not just for themselves, but everyone around them, all their family. You know, it can be devastating if things go wrong. Mm. So um, I jumped. On, I was on my own, jumped on the tracks, jumped over, and I walked down towards the station, just bombing the whole way, then come back, bombing, bombing further down. And then um, it started raining at this point. And where I am, on the other side of the tracks, which is like four rows of tracks, is the spot I want to paint. Mm. So I've stepped over the first rail, and now I'm in between the two and the third rail. So as I've stepped over the third rail, because it's raining and all the, uh, the tracky stones are slippery, I've stepped over and like started doing the splits, because my feet have like slipped mm. on the stones. So now I'm like going down, basically, onto the third rail. Oh, so as a like... What, onto your crutch? Just sort of head Slip. first, going oh. down onto it. That. Yeah, mate. So as a, like a, just an instinctive like reaction, I've just managed to bury my foot in the stones and push myself back over. <sighs> and then I stood there and I was like, mate, this is fucked. Like, I was close to fucking losing my life right there. Mm. I can't do this shit because my parents have already lived through what can happen if it goes wrong, if it happens to me. Mm. They can't take that, man. Mm. Like, they've, they've lived their life and shit's gone bad because of that happening. And now to me to put myself in a position where it could happen again to them, to their last son they have. Mm. It's not right, man. I can't, can't do that to my parents, no matter how much I love Graf, mm. much how much I love getting out there, mm. doing my thing. The passion is always going to be inside me. No matter how old I am, I always want to get out and do it. It's a bit of a madness, it's man, a because, madness. you know, you got to, I, I put my family, you know, yeah. my family, they're everything. So I've got to, you know, think about what I do cautiously to make sure, you know. But you know what, after that, I still crossed over. I got to the other side. I started painting. <laughs> I carried on. I started carrying, man. I did my piece. There was um, like a little metal box, like the row that goes along with all the electric cables in it. Oh, yeah. So as I started painting that, I feared this like rustling in the bush, like something big. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Uh -oh. So I've looked. There's a badger, shit, you know, a badger, about fucking two foot wide, had some girth on it, yeah? yeah. And he's fucking running full pelt at me. Stop it. Yeah, mate. So I've... What? <laughs> yeah, so I'm fucking massive badger, yeah? So I've just hopped over this thing. Thinking something's like going to take me yeah, out. I've heard some stories from <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, mate. But I've never heard anything of anyone being chased by a fucking badger. Yeah, mate. That was a fucking madness. Absolute madness. So it's I'm, like a genius. Yeah, mate. Breezed out. Wait for it to go. Jump back over. Finish off doing my piece. Boom. I'm out of there. All good. All good. Oh, my God. But yeah, that, that was a, a mad night. One of many. One of many. Have you, heard, have you ever encountered people that you paint when winning? Say no names. But uh, encountered uh, scenarios with... People you paint with, and you're just like, just because your moral compass is on peak, because of all the life experiences you've garnered up to the point, and graph, yeah, it's a risky game. Have you seen people do things where you just think, just the fuck, man, that's, that's 
It's yeah. It's too risky, bro. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Like, are you doing? Well, yeah, like, I've got, you know, plenty of pals who are out there doing their thing, huh. road size, track size, painting trains, all that sort of stuff. And I heard a story from a couple of my mates. They were out drinking, like, drinking lean, codeine and all that, getting mm. fucked, doing sniffing lines of ket when they are on the tracks. I can know. My mate was telling me, like, he was so fucked off ket, he was, like, tripping over in between the tracks. I like, could barely walk, and he's out there painting, and I'm thinking, mate, if you fall over, it's not you that's gonna have a problem. It's your whole family yeah. that's gonna suffer the consequences. Yeah. And like for me, I just say to people like, if you're gonna do it, man, just be careful. You know, be your wits about you. Be sensible, because you know it is. You know, most graphers, pretty much all graphers, you know, they're on job. They know what they're doing. But a lot of people do it after a few drinks, a few joints, or whatever, and that's when you might not be so uh, so aware of your surroundings, not so mm-hmm. on point. Like even. A while ago, me and about five mates who went to hit some panels, we're there, everyone's like all hyped up, having a good time, like you're laughing and joking, walking down the tracks. I'm at the back thinking, these guys are being too hot, man. Mm. Like, fucking train comes, someone's walking down with their flashlight, mm. just being crazy, bait. And in them situations, you've got to be on point, I feel. You've got to be, you know, on your A game. You've got to move militant, mm. you know, because, you know, if things go wrong, you're probably looking at doing a bit of time. Yeah. And... uh you know, a lot of people I know, I'm surprised at how many people I know have actually been locked up for graph because it's it's a madness going out there doing something you love, painting or stuff, gonna have some serious consequences and mm. madness, man. Something yeah, yeah. Madness. At this point, at this point, you know, we're talking in past tense, and the, the, the people we're talking about now is a it's a far cry from where 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 you tread nowadays. Obviously, it was a different story at certain times um, in history, but um, yeah, man, I think. It's it's an art in itself. Respect the craft. I think if you're going out and doing something, I learnt this really early on from uh, my brother Vamp. Big up Vamp. Uh, you know, in yeah, terms yeah. of, oh, do you know what I mean? King it's like king did, king did. But always focus, focus. That's it. That's and a lot it. of the top top boys, and even nowadays, as we know, you know, it's just it's it's fucking split second reaction, super focus. That's it. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent, mate. Just a ton more. Things at stake nowadays, and perhaps yeah. there ever were. Yeah, like back in the nineties, the noughties, like BTP and police were a lot more on it. I feel like nowadays there's a lot more of a relaxed feeling towards graph. Like even today, I was reading the news: the government is trying to crack down on graph, and their new way they're bringing in is giving five hundred pound spots uh, fines on the spot. So if you get caught, it's a straight fine. Which, <coughs> it's not too bad, man. I'd rather get a £500 fine than get nicked. <laughs> That's not Far too bad. what it used to be. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, like I've heard of people doing a serious bit of bird over painting. Yeah. And I don't know where it's going now. I feel like, yeah, Banksy, for instance, I know he's got a lot of love-hate. Mm. Some people hate him. Obviously, for what he did to Robbo, taking him out, which is, yeah. you know... Unexcusable. Unexcusable. Yeah. Can't be doing shit like that, man. That was a London king. Yeah. And what he did was unforgivable. No, that's right. And he's going to get a lifetime of fate, which he deserves for doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, he did open a lot of doors mm. for graphers because it's made it a lot more lenient. There's a lot more, uh, you know... Tolerant. A lot more tolerance because of him. So as much as I don't like what he's done... It has opened doors for people to come through, which is, you know, every cloud has a silver lining, as they say. Mm. Yeah, and then Saatchi be on the streets, and it makes it really hard. I think it makes it really hard for the, the power. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm speaking out of turn here. Perhaps, though, when you can go to the Saatchi gallery and see influence of artists and pieces things from one era that indirectly or directly influences people's perceptions of what graffiti is now like it makes it really hard to determine what's bad and what's good okay is it based on an illegal thing or well, everyone in that exhibition one way or another has been contributive to making that come to life by any means necessary. It's a really interesting yeah, dynamic. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the... I've never, I never haven't been to the, uh, the gallery myself. I want to go, see what it's all about. You know, a, yeah, lot, a lot of it, from what I hear, is legal stuff. It's just trying to appeal to people that aren't so much into graph to open their eyes into, like, the whole graph, seeing what it's about. Yeah. 
But, you know, there's some real heavy hitters that have also got work there. That's mm -hmm. the stuff I want to see. Yeah. You know, your 10 foot, mm -hmm. your Baz, you know, all that, man. Like, those are some kings of the city. And to see some of their work they've done, man, I'm all for that. LWS as well. Man. LWS, man. Come that's on. it. That's it. So, yeah, some big heavy hitters. So I'm looking forward to going to check that out. Gonna be good, gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Get some more stories, my brother. You know, fucking yearning for these stories that you, uh, you, okay. that you've been privy to in your careers thus far. Uh, so, I think first time I ever got nicked for graph, that was a bit of a mad one. So <laughs> Tell was, all. Yeah, so I was about 13, 14. Me and my mate were smoking a few joints of hash, getting a little bit hazy, and there was this, um. Like big warehouse shop that just sold a bit, little bit of everything. Mm. So we were in there running around getting silly string, just spraying each other, just being little shits like you do when you're a kid. <laughs> um, and then we've seen like yeah. some spray paint cans, like gold and silver, just like the cheapest, shittest stuff. Yeah. I was like, mate, just keep your eyes peeled, yeah. Closed yeah, off this. a can. Yeah. And I've like, come, let's get out of here. So now we're fucking young, like thinking we're fucking like some big gangsters because we're running like one can from a shop. So now we're like just walking around the area, bombing alleyways, hitting bus stops, doing all that sort of stuff. And then there's this girl who lived on the estate near us. And she was like, we went to her estate, went to her house, and she was like, oh, come in my stairwell. You can graph like all the way up my stairwell. So she lived on the first floor. So we've graphed from the front door all the way up the stairwell to her front door. Absolutely battered, pretty much the whole camp. Right up to the door. Right up to her doorstep. Genius. Uh, yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> some dumb shit. And the next minute, her old man's got back, and he's some big fucking hefty guy. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing painting in my house? Oh, I'm going to call the old Bill. And uh, like, we were like shitting ourselves. Yeah. We're bare height, like, fuck, we're in too deep here. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm going to give you a bucket and a sponge. I'm going to stay here, and if you don't clean it all off, I'm calling the police. Uh, we're thinking, fuck. Like he knows us. He lives right next to us. He's going to see us. So if we run away, he's probably going to weigh us he's in at some point. Out, yeah. yeah, so we're like, fuck it. We'll at least show we're willing to try and clean it off. Yeah. So we're there scrubbing away, knowing full well it's not coming he off. It's, it's dry paint at this point. So now he's like, right, fucking stay here. I'm calling the police. And we're like, fuck. Well, we may as well stay now. All they're going to do is tell us off and we'll be on our way. Yeah. It's going to be a minor. They'll just give us a little slap on the wrist. So now we're there just well stoned. Like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> what are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. Next minute, the police have come, slapped us on the cuffs, took us to the police station. And, uh, yeah, they called my parents. My parents were like, nah, we're not even going to come to the police station. Like, we can't even go there. We don't even want to see you right now. So then my mate's mum came and had to be in the interview room with me because mm. I was under 16 at the mm. time. So, yeah, that was the first time, first of many. And then uh, got back home and mum was like, look, you're just not cut out for this criminal life. You make a terrible criminal. Just learn from your assessing, learn from your mistakes, and don't do it again. And that ended up being a bit of a saying from my mum. <laughs> it was quite <laughs> a few times she went on to say that. I had a quid for every time yeah, I said that. Yeah, so... Uh, so how many times have you been caught then? Uh, fuck, you know. <laughs> Four or five times. So she went wrong. <laughs> yeah, she went wrong, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I'm an impulsive person. <clears throat> Even if it's a bad situation, and I want to do something, I'll just go and do it. And I live off impulse, you mm. know. So that was the first time. I think the second time, maybe about a year later, uh, I, my plan was it was a Saturday, middle of summer. My, I knew there was a shop in Camden that sells spray paint, pens and all that. Mm -hmm. So my plan was I'd get the trains to Camden, get these New York mops, like these proper drippy pens, mm -hmm. and just take it back home and batter the area with it. So I've done that, got the train Waterloo, Waterloo to Camden. And now I'm from Camden back to Waterloo. And now it's like rush hour, the train's absolutely packed with people. So my plan was when it pulls up to Waterloo, everyone's going to be so tunnel vision of getting off the train. Just want to fuck off, don't they? No yeah. one's going to be paying me any notice if I'm bombing insides. So then what I've done is I've, as if the doors have opened, everyone's got off. I've started bombing the windows between the two carriages on, yeah. the, on the glass. Yeah. So I've done that massive drippy reach. Next window, massive drippy reach. Jumped off and then bang, felt cuff go straight on my wrist, hand behind my back. And it was an undercover police officer had seen me through the window in the next carriage. Oh, yeah. God. Caught fucking red handed Waterloo Station, rush hour. And like this was back mid 2000s. So this is when you wear big baggy clothes. My trousers are like around my knees and that falling down. <laughs> so now he's taking me up the escalator, walking me through Waterloo Station where everyone's just looking at me in like complete disgust. Like this absolute wrong and <laughs> getting arrested or whatever. Oh. And they, yeah, put me in the holding cell in Waterloo Station. What was that like? Fucking horrible, man. Talk to me about that. What's it like inside there? Oh, fucking madness. I was sitting there about two hours. Police officer just left me in cuffs two hours. 
came back, was just eating his McDonald's in front of me. And I'm thinking, you motherfucker. He yeah, <laughs> yeah. just, just fucked off, <laughs> left me sitting there and then ended up taking me in. And, well, I said we were waiting for a meat wagon. Mm. A police van to come through, put me in that, took me to Good Street Station, police station. Hell. Was there for like another four hours. How was that? Look mad, this mate. Like, I'm just a young kid. I'm not a, not a fucking hardened criminal. How old were you? Uh, about 14, yeah, something young, like yeah. that. I'm not a hardened criminal, just mm. someone who likes, you know, doing a bit of damage, mm. getting out, doing his thing. Mm. And I'm thinking, fuck, man, this is fucked. Like, mm. <laughs> I've just wanted to get a couple reaches, and now, yeah, you know. yeah shit went peak real quick. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just no comment. So I was a young kid, wasn't really out doing much, and mm. just let me go. All good. Because you're too young, wasn't it? That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're looking for you know big names, people who are doing some serious damage, and I'm just. Just mm. some little kid, like, writing his name on something, you mm. know? So, yeah, they let me go, and that was that. Got trained back home, met my mate, smoked up a fat joint, and it was all good. <laughs> it was all good. Dude, what is it about graft that just is, like, a moth to... F- just makes... Yeah, I just want to go and do it again, even though, you know, full world it, you know? Yeah, the consequences are there, but, you know, when it's like anything in life, if you're passionate about it, no matter how many times you get told you can't do it, you're still going to go and do it. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was the second time I got nicked for graph. <laughs> I mean, from yeah, then, as one does. That's it. You know, what was the third time then? Third time. Whew. Well, it was it was a bit of a gap between then. Like <laughs> I was like I was quite lucky that I didn't get yeah. caught for a while between then. <laughs> Fucking right. But, uh, Hold on, well that would that, that would take you to over the age of. Well, yeah. So I mean, from fourteen, that's when I really started graphing. Like fourteen, seventeen, eighteen is when like at school, like me and my one of my pals, we were out racking paint. And then a couple of years above us, we had a group of friends and they had their own graph crew, F- mm. uh, FT- FTS, okay. full-time sprayers, fuck the system, which is probably like the most bait graph crew. I'm sure there's like 100 FTS <laughs> crews out there. And uh, they were... Put- Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they were putting us on game, showing us how to rack paint, showing us all the spots. We would go out painting with them. And I remember one of them used to uh, sell a bit of weed from his house and in his bedroom had a big FTS stub and every other wall was full of, like, pieces of paper with dubs and sketches on it. Uh-huh. So then I'd go around there, smoke a joint, and then do a dub and say to him, mate, yo, can you stick it on the wall? And he's like, nah, you're not quite there yet, mate. I tell you, keep at it, bit down the line, mate, you might make it onto the wall. Mm-hmm. So then I'd keep sketching, trying to get better and better. A couple of months pass, start progressing, and then do a piece, and like, yo, mate, you've smashed it. That's fucking sick. That's going straight on the good wall. And I'm like, fuck, I've made it, mate. Yeah. We're getting there. Get it. I know that I'm moving in the right direction. Keep it moving. Um, yeah, and like around those times, like I used to go on YouTube a lot and like find out how to make my own little gra- graph pens, like New York mops, how you make them up, like deodorant cans. Yeah. And then, um, sorry, not God, like, I like, love a, that. It's called like a roll on like deodorant type thing. Uh, still like a teacher's whiteboard eraser, get the yeah. felt, fold it in half. Get a bit of brake fluid, you make your own minks and uh, inks and that. So good. That's it, man. Like, I love that shit. That's part of the... Being f- creative, you know. It's, the graph's one thing, but then getting your own supplies, making yeah. your own supplies. That's what it's about, it's man. Best, man. Like, I hear so many stories. I don't know if I was very privy to it, but it's just so beautiful that yeah, people... Yeah, there's... Just cr- t- tailoring what that's you it. do. There's a whole art to it. No, the graph is one side, but the other side is, you know, getting your paint, Mm. In your spots, lining up your spots, getting on to spots. There's a whole world. Like these days, there's like a lot more easy ways of getting to things and doing stuff, mm. which I won't say too much about. But back then, it was, you know, getting to the spot was half the work. Yeah. Nowadays, it can be a lot easier to get to places. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, another thing I first did, like before, it's the first time I painted a train. I was about 16 at the time. Wow. And uh, I remember looking on YouTube and people were doing uh, fire extinguishers, getting big reaches. And I saw Fuck right. Big, Jesus, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, I've always wanted to try wow. that. But the best I've got, my parents had a plant fertilizer spray, one of the ones you pump up. So I got that. I got a big pot of paint from my parents' garage, watered it down a bit in the thing, and then I drove down to a train station, end of a line where I know a train like lays up. So I went down there, pumped it up, trains pulled up, everyone's got off the train. I've just absolutely battered it, top to bottom, <laughs> whole carriages, big, fat, drippy reaches. Stuff it. Oh, mate, fucking sick. Absolutely happy. And that worked? Yeah, man, fucking whole, fucking whole cart, big reaches and that. 16 years old, and now I tried to get pictures, but because my phones with cameras were so shit back then, I couldn't get any good pictures. And then a couple of weeks later, my mate had seen it at Waterloo and got some pictures, 
and showed me the pictures of it, and I was like, fuck, that's mad. Like, something I did here, yeah. I was running all the way there. Yeah, yeah. Mad, just mad. It's part of the appeal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Seeing my stuff, although it was some drippy, horrible, <laughs> shitty-looking breach, it still travelled around. People have seen it, and that was sick, man. Loved that. Loved that shit. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't know you could do it with that. I mean, look, again, how's it actually... I've got a question, actually. I've got a question. How, how do they put the ink... The Sorry. How do they put the uh, paint in the um, fire extinguishers? Fire extinguishers. Um, from what I've, I've never done it myself, but from what I've seen, you can like release all the pressure from it, so yeah. there's nothing at all, yeah. and you like knock the head off with like a hammer, right. unscrew it, pour your paint, dilute it with some water, knock it back on, and then you get like a, you can like uh, put like a bike valve in it somehow. Or even through the nozzle, you get like a bike pump and you can hold the handle down and pump pressure back into it. What? Until you get it super pressurised. And then once you do that lever, it's fucking, you know, ready to go. Didn't know that. There you go. Something like that. Something Checklist. like that. Something yeah. like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Don't quote us on that. that That's it. Yeah, man. It's the ingenuity. Just clever the shit. The bad thing I think people are doing now, you get a super soaker, a water pistol. You fill that up. Boom, boom, boom. You've got to go. You get some big creatures with that. Really? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely love it. I you... <laughs> Still got to give that a try, but at some point, mate. At it's some point. It's a real needs must <laughs> kind of thing, isn't it? That's it, man. So, yeah, that was that was my youth, racking paint, getting out, doing my thing. And you know, I kept it local. Like mm. People won't know the stuff I did back then because it was all on my home turf. I wasn't uptown doing it, battering it. I just, just stayed local, doing my thing in my own terms. A little bit here, a little bit there. Well, that kind of explains how I say, but how did you get into the LWS? How, like, how did... So, LWS, uh, my friend... Big up Catch, by the way, to you, family, catch, come on. Um, so, me and my pal Scott, a Hungarian guy, good writer, man, probably a chilled out dude. He uh, he was good friends with Rookie, mm -hmm. LWS. Old tight Rookie. That's it. So, fucking, we went to go meet them, chill out, have a little chill spray paint, mm -hmm. and Catch came down. And straight away, you know, we vibed. He's a good, good person. Mm. No ego, just chilled out, positive, mm -hmm. optimistic person. We just got on well. Painted together. And he's like, mate, I love what you're doing. I love your vibe. You know, you're chilled out. You haven't got a big ego. You're just a normal, normal person. Mm. I respect that. Love what you do. And yeah, mate, I want to put you in the crew. So That's yeah. Fucking, God, that must have just been like. Oh, mate, yes. massive moment because he's he's old school, man. He's been around since the night. He's still yeah. still got his clean letters, bang yeah. fills, Ugh. still killing it. So good. Yeah. So just, I just feel like I, I, speaking personally from around these areas, I always feel like I'm home when I see like yeah, catch it. Reach, you know what I mean? That's it, mate. Fucking Beautiful, proper proper old school writer, man. He's still mm. doing stuff. Yeah. From what I hear, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. fucking still still banging it out. Yeah. So big big know, respect to him, man. Big love for him putting me in the crew. So yeah. Happy guy, man. Happy yeah. guy. Yeah. PA, you've been rolling with the boys for a little while as well, yeah, which is I think, a beautiful thing. I think that big was, up Slob. I said big up Slob, big up all the PA yeah, people, man, as family there. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that was started maybe about three, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all, you know, <clears throat> it's all no egos. Mm. Everyone uplifts each other. Mm. We're all there to support, you know. It's none of this ego, who's better than who. We're all just there as a group, as a family, trying to uplift one another and just spread positive vibes, you know? Mm. That's what life's about, mate. I, again, I just rate the, I rate the fact that it's just like a next generation, and they're all, I'm moving in different ways. Uh, it's quick, it's well, quick to bring up the start of the show. It's, 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 a, it's a, a new kind of landscape, new, new practice, and it's only going to accelerate now, I think, with the way technology's moving whether it be AI, NFTs, whether it's surveillance, whether it's the liberation of like, well, actually, could it be that graffiti is culturally appropriated enough to just be what it is and Joe Public ain't as shocked anymore? Yeah. Is it going to be safe under these new technological advances? Yeah, well, I think it's mad. Like, for me, like, graph has always been, to be a writer, you've got to go out, rack your paint, and if you're doing stuff, you don't need to put it on social media. Mm. Like the streets will know if you're out doing stuff. The streets will know. The streets will know. If you're just doing little bits, but put it on Instagram to get followers, to get likes, that mm. whole so this whole social media writer, mm. like for me, I don't agree with that, man. Mm. That's that's not me personally. Like people do that stuff to get to get them 
get themselves out there. Mm-hmm. But if you're a writer, you do it for the love and for the passion of the writing itself. Mm-hmm. People might think, a bit rich coming from me because a lot of what I do, I put on social media, but it's not to get uh, approval from other people. It's because I love it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I always have done since a young kid. If someone else enjoys seeing what I'm doing or they get inspired by it, to me, that's just an added bonus. And I put it out there for people to enjoy and take it as they will. You know? mm. That's all it. But I think, you know, you've got to roll with the times. Like nowadays, social media is fucking massive. It's like made a massive boom to graphic. It has mm. made it bigger than it's ever been from what I've seen mm. because now everybody can graph. Everybody can do a piece yeah. like a legal wall. Yeah. They can buy paint and make a name for themselves through social media, which was never, it was always put in the work and get recognition. Yeah. And it's it's all a bit mad now, man. It's all a bit mad. Yeah. It's just, just it's time to change and you roll with it. And that's what it is, you know? How do you forecast the future? What do you see it like? That's a fucking big question. That's a big one, mate. That is... Well, we're always talking about past. I mean, this is probably the detail we can go on, the present, future. I think the future, yeah. like, I think it's becoming more of an epidemic, the graph. So it's only a matter of time before, like even with trains, surveillance, all of the security around trains, that's all on the up. Mm. Like in five years, 10 years, they're going to have drones, like everything's going to be so much harder to do. Mm. So it's it, it, everything's going to be harder. Can so you now, imagine? Yeah. yeah, like back in the 90s, there was little chicken wire fence and you're in. Boom, mm-hmm. job done. <laughs> now you've got most... Don't know what you mean. <laughs> Don't know what you mean. So nowadays, it's all getting more and more locked down, more harder to get into. And what's it going to be like in five years, ten years? Fucking near on impossible to get into these places. But, I mean, everyone's always going to find a way, but it's, yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be a madness. Sometimes, I f- you know, speaking to old school Gs, you know, the OGs, and, uh, you know, there's a real romanticism in how they talk and stuff, but there was a simplicity about it. And sometimes they get, the, the guys, they'll be quick to say, actually, the OGs will be quick to say, you know what, though, I couldn't do it now. Yeah, yeah. Because just the, it's almost like... you they just they, There's just such a level. You've almost got to be bred into it within that level like it's, it's impossible to you can't go back like it's it's not simple anymore no there's definitely an art to it you know if you're a rookie of no experience trying to do stuff like that you're gonna fuck up <laughs> like the people that have are, are doing it now are people that are experienced veterans in it yeah if they're not they are friends with someone who is that shows them the ways but to go in there as a new writer trying to do these things, mm-hmm. you've got a lot to look out for, man, because, you know... I wonder what the statistic is. I wonder what the statistic is of one professional to however many imitators. that, Or rather, newcomers. Sorry, can I sorry? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, like, from statistically, I wonder, I wonder how it looks for every one superior professional fucking nail in it. Yeah. How many amateurs that amateurs don't, mate, that, that, that fucking come shit loads, A fucking shit load. I think, like, for people that are veterans, there's few people that kill it regularly. Like, you don't even see their pieces, but they're out there smashing it. Mm. And they keep them secrets to themselves because they know if they tell everybody else, then their ways in are going to mm. be compromised by people that are not so clued up. Mm. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, you say, amateurs or new people to the game. Mm. Don't know the rules, mm. you know. Graphs. There's so many rules in graph. You think like you're just going up painting your name on things, but there's like so many unwritten rules. Like you don't take people out. Mm. You, you know, what is it? Tags, throws over tags, mm. dubs over throws, mm. full colours over uh, pieces or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. There's rules and respect. You've got to respect another writer. You don't fucking go around just taking people out because you're yeah. gonna have dramas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Especially in illegal spots. Like I never understood why people take out other people when it's on the track side and there's loads of space. That's it. And that makes sense to me. Yeah, no. That, that's you just ask for trouble if you do stuff yeah. like that, man. It's just a. It's just a no-go, really. You've got to have respect for the next person yeah. because they've put their life, their freedom on the line to Big get time. to that. Yeah. So if you go out there taking them out, man, that's just starting an immediate war. Yeah. So you've got to you know, respect your peers, respect the people, like anyone that's out there doing this thing, man, up my respect because you know they've got to put a lot on the line. So anyone mm. out doing it, man, 
Well done, well done. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, man. And uh, look after each other once, once again. My brother, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on. Mate, it's been good being here, man. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, it's, it's, it can be quite intense at times coming into, into the arena. As you can see at the back, there's a big swimming pool with a, yeah, loads yeah. of scantily wearing girls. That's and, it. Jacuzzi's yeah, looking nice, mate. Jacuzzi's good and all that good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I mean, we keep it moving over on the podcast. Moan. Mate, good to see you, brother. I appreciate it, yeah. I say, my brother, you too. Thank you so much. No and, way, you know, man. another insight with another writer of our times. And um, Big shout out to everybody out there doing their things. Bits and bobs, whatever it is, keeping the street culture alive, keeping things moving, yeah? Um, we are like him was out of fashion, all right? Crime don't pay, neither do they. Don't talk to him, I wouldn't. Uh, you stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Sweet. Nice, mate. Yeah. Oh.